This is From Hero to Zero, a show about the misconception of the demise of the music industry. We talk to heroes to make sense of the alleged zero, the music business. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much. Cool. So, Mark, um, you're the mastermind behind Dutch symphonic metal band Epica. Been around since the early 2000s, 2002, 3? Yeah. So, so that's already a while. <laughs> exactly. So where do you see the biggest difference about being a musician today, 2017, yeah. compared to when you guys started in early 2000s? Um, yeah, many things stayed the same, but uh, I think the, the, the biggest difference, actually I have to compare when I started with my first band, After Forever. The internet was just coming up, mm -hmm. the, not everybody had internet yet, there was not that many people with an email address yet. And with After Forever we were the first people who were collecting email addresses and sent out as that what later was called a spam mail. <laughs> <laughs> but then at that time, people responded by, thank you very much for the information by uh, giving to us by, uh, by After Forever. Uh, if you now would do something like that when people don't ask for it, they say, spam, spam, and of course it is spam. But in the beginning, that was, people were thankful for it and uh, polite. So we were, we were the inventors of the spam mail. Awesome, it worked very well, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, it worked very well and we, we did a good job in uh, advertising ourselves and we made use of the internet from the very early stage and with Epica we still do. I think uh, it's, it, it, turned, uh, yeah, it turned out completely different nowadays. Uh, it, there's many other ways now to, on the internet to promote yourselves, but constantly you have to find the new way, attractive ways to, to uh, promote yourselves. And, uh, because sooner or later everybody starts doing it and then you have to find something new again. Exactly. I just saw that uh, when um, <coughs> the holographic principle came out last end of September, yeah. uh, 30th of the September, 29th, 30th. Yeah, September. it's around that time somewhere. The end of September, <laughs> you had a live Q&A session on Facebook yeah. all by yourself. So yeah. that is basically a new kind of marketing your band. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because that, that, uh, that there was a new tool on Facebook and we discussed it and we said, let's, let's use it. And uh, yeah, that, but then we also, we were one of the first doing, doing that. So there's always new ways and that's what I said, yeah, you have to find new ways and do it and uh, before everybody else is doing it because then it's not uh, special anymore. Exactly. Um, talking about technology, um, it's no secret that physical album sales, CDs and so forth, um, they are still decreasing. Yeah. Um, how do you cope with that and how, what do you do to counter that? What we do uh, to start with is uh, uh, offering a great uh, CD booklet, a great LP uh, and you have somewhere there the... Exactly. There <laughs> actually, the, the viewers cannot see it, but the, the audio earbook. Uh, and so we, we try to make something really special that when people buy our album, they really have something that uh, they enjoy having it and uh, I think that's that's all we can do and uh, CD sales are uh, uh, dropping but because of this and because we have very loyal fans and in metal fans in general they still uh, buy quite uh, quite some CDs we are very lucky for that and uh, because there's some pop artists and they they sell almost nothing anymore but yeah then they should have not made uh, pop music <laughs> Fair point, fair point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just today I read a quote by Gene Simmons in the same vein. He said that he's not interested in making a new Kiss album unless and if there's a financial model that works. What? Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed that these, these old bands, they are still pretty pissed about how it developed. And uh, I, I sometimes have to, to laugh a little bit about it because they are used to, to that standard of millions of CDs getting sold and. Uh, and uh, being able to have a house with a big pool. We, uh, we grew up in, a, in another era where CD sales were already not that high anymore, so we are used to be not millionaires. <laughs> so that it's easier to be happy with what we have, rather than when you come from here and then suddenly be here. 
So, but there's quite some bands from from the past that are still complaining about about this. But I think you have to look at the, the bright side of uh, we can tour, we can live from our music, even though we're not millionaires. We do whatever we wish for doing. It's our dream. So we we, we look always at the the bright side of the. Very good to hear. Very life. good to hear. Yeah. Do you ever miss? Um, the old model, which you didn't know, of course, but do you miss not selling as much as they did? Yes, we, we'd never experienced it. We, we cannot miss it. So mm. I don't know. Yeah, I can imagine how it is to sell uh, two, three million CDs. I can imagine it. Uh, it can be awesome too. I, I won't deny that. But it, that's, that's this, uh, the current reality is that it's not the case. Mm. So I'm, I'm not a, a, a dreamer of thinking like, ah, oh, I wish it was still like this. Uh, you have to do it with the, the reality, the, the now. Sure. Um, before the interview, we were just chit-chatting a bit, and you mentioned that for the first time you're going to Asia, oh, to, the, to Japan, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. To Japan. So what does a band like Epica do to expand their markets? Well, how do you go about that? Yeah, well, it was already a long-term wish to go to Japan, actually, because uh, it's, it's one of those countries where we hear all these great stories about, and we'd never been there. And in the past, there was not enough uh, CD sales also to, to go there, but now we grew, and it's possible to, to finally go. And uh, also, there's, there's now some, some really, really cool uh, new uh, opportunity coming up from a Japanese uh, uh, game maker or a movie maker and uh, so hopefully we can uh, it, that it will work out and that will be uh, yeah giving us some some new opportunities for the J Japanese market as well so uh, that having said uh, there's always new opportunities and when uh, a train passes by we always want to jump on it as long as it's a good story of course and yeah th there's always opportunities you only have to grasp them at the right moment. Sure, great, good to hear, good to hear. Um, you just mentioned there were not enough um, CD sales to go to Japan. <coughs> um, I checked your, um, your chart positionings and ever since the first record, uh, now with the seventh record, um, you steadily increased your chart positions. Yeah. It, some say, some artists say it's irrelevant nowadays for them. How is it for you, how is it for Epica? Um, it's, it's most relevant for our uh, manager, he's really into that stuff, but I must say it's, it's uh, when, when I get to see that we uh, were with the previous album uh, on 42 for example in Belgium and now we are on 30, it's still nice to see that, that it's higher and of course it's, it's when, we, when we will get for the first time somewhere a number one position that will be something to celebrate for sure. Even though I'm not uh, not so much into to chart positions myself, if we make a number one somewhere in the future, that will be really cool. Sure. I read that you won the award, um, the Dutch award for best. Uh, help me out again. International. Yeah, the the, the most successful international artist. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was really big uh, big uh, reward for all the work we're doing, and also acknowledgement uh, because. Uh, we're already around for so many years, but uh, to be honest, the mainstream media, it's, it's like they, they have no idea that we exist. <laughs> so then being a very successful Dutch artist, sooner or later they must, must see it. So it's, it's also really nice that we get such a reward for all the work. And uh, hopefully also sooner or later that then the, 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 the mainstream media will be proud of us. Sure, sure. Um, I saw an interview um, where you mentioned that on um, the hologram principle you went to gather a whole real instrument orchestra yes. instead of yeah. uh, playing it on a synthesizer, yeah. which means basically you went from digital back to analog to do that. Yeah. Um, why? Uh, the, 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 the answer is very simple because it sounds better. And uh, I think uh, all bands would prefer doing that if it was not so expensive. And now our budget is finally good enough to be able to have a whole orchestra on our album. But yet, yeah, it sounds so much better. Even as samples nowadays, they sound already extremely good. 
Uh, but when there's a real human being playing an instrument instead of a an, an, uh, digital instrument, it's a difference. It's a difference. And uh, I think it will be really hard for, for computers to replace a, a human being. Yeah, sure. Um, you just mentioned budgets nowadays are better for you so that you can actually do that. Um, I, I read somewhere that you had gigs in South America somewhere and you didn't get paid the amount that you were supposed to. I'm Venezuela. <laughs> that was in Venezuela, now that you mentioned yeah, yeah. it, I remember, exactly. Um, as a band, how, how do you go about that? Uh, you said it was twice that this happened. How, yeah, it was a bit funny. We, we've been there twice and, and it happened twice to us. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, yeah, what can you do? Uh, so you can do two things. You don't play or you make the fans happy that are uh, already there. And uh, so we, we chose to, to still play and uh, because uh, there's, there's so many people so happy to see us. And that's at that moment more important. And uh, but there's also it happened also in the past somewhere where we didn't get paid on a festival in France, and we play quite often in France. And, and there we made the decision we were not going to play, because if you always play, they think oh we we should not pay them. They play anyway. Exactly. So yeah, we that, it, it's always a hard decision uh, because there's always you let always fans down in a way, if, because they cannot be blamed for for or a shitty promoter who, who doesn't pay you. But uh, if you make a decision to don't play, it's always with pain in the heart for the people where you come for, the fans. Sure, and I think it's beautiful that you actually played for the fans. So that's yeah, in Venezuela, because the, also now I still, we still get many messages when you come back to Venezuela, and hopefully we can come back. Sure. There must be a promoter who is who is going Trust to pay us team. afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> well, Mark, it was very interesting. Thank you so much. All the best You're with welcome. the tour. And Thanks a lot. See you again.